Herbaria are a huge collection of plant biodiversity. Here we are in the herbarium of the University of Göttingen, one of the oldest uh, herbaria in uh, Germany. This herbarium houses about 700,000 uh, specimens. Uh, most of them are from the 19th century. This is also an old specimen that was collected in 1871, presumably in Ethiopia. Uh, well, for a um, systematic botanist like me, it would be great to have the possibility to work with those specimens or to take advantage of such a huge collection of plant biodiversity. Uh, well, but uh, there are some issues usually, especially if you want to work with DNA and sequence-based techniques. Um, there, is, uh, there are some problems uh, working with those specimens because usually the DNA uh, that they contain is not very much, first of all, and then uh, usually it's uh, degraded and uh, and uh, very fragmented. Uh, there are methods able to cope with that and that's what we are going to demonstrate today. Uh, today we are going to see the PTB DDT extraction methods that was uh, first designed for uh, archaeological remains and, uh, and uh, so for teeth and bones in the human beings or uh, animals and then it was adapted by Kutaker and colleagues uh, to uh, plant herbarium specimen or old herbarium specimen. But for that, I think it's better if we move to the lab. When you are working with all DNA, with all DNA the best is to work in a protected environment. That's why we have a specific lab where we do just those stuffs, separated from the main lab where we do other stuffs with uh, other molecular techniques. Um, in this lab, where everything is clean, we have to follow also stricter hygiene rules. Uh, for example, we have to dress a specific coat, an overall coat, and uh, everything, we have to uh, also uh, use mask and everything in there will be cleaned with bleach or with a specific product like DNA whey. As I told you before, we need to, to dress those overall coat, uh, gloves of course, and everything here has to be cleaned uh, with, uh, either with bleach and DNA whey or it can be irradiated with uh, UV light. Uh, we are going also to work under this uh, laminar floor bench. Well, this is not the last, uh, the, the, the last model, but still it's fine for our purposes. All those measures are done in order to minimize uh, the risk of contamination with other DNA. And this because uh, each, even the smallest contamination when working with such old DNA can have really a tremendous effect for the analysis we are going to do afterwards. As I told you before, before starting, we have to uh, clean all the surfaces with bleach or, or irradiating with uh, UV light. The same is true for some of the consumable, like the beads, the metal beads we are going to use for, um, uh, for grinding the plant material, as well as some other plastic consumable we are going to use tomorrow. We do that by a, a bleach bath, so 20 minutes in bleach, and then uh, I'll rinse it in, in distillated water. We can shortly dry them and then place them in the tubes with the samples. So we need to prepare before and three buffers, the PTB DTT buffer, which is the most important or the lysis buffer. We need to prepare it fresh uh, right uh, before starting with the uh, extractions. And then we need two more buffers. So the easy uh, sodium acetate buffer and uh, guanidine hypochlorite uh, uh, Forty percent isopropanol buffer. Those two uh, can be pre prepared also in advance and be stored uh, in the fridge. That's not a problem. And those we are going to use them uh, tomorrow during the uh, the continuation of the protocol. This buffer, the guanidine hypochlorite buffer, forty percent isopropanol, is basically the binding buffer. It's not much different from those binding buffer that we find in other commercial in, in commercial kit for DNA isolation. So those uh, silica column based uh, DNA isolation kits. Uh, we need to prepare on our own because we need big amounts of those today. This evening we are going to prepare the PTB DDT buffer. Uh, you see the composition here on the on the video. Uh, well, that's the way I uh, how I prepare it. I prepare um, uh, stock solution, so 10-fold uh, concentrated stock solution for most of the ingredients, uh, for those that I can uh, store in the uh, for longer time in the fridge or at room temperature. Then I'm going to mix them. After that, I'm going to add uh, two compounds that are more delicate, over which I cannot prepare stock solutions so of PTB and proteinase K. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to adjust the concentration using millipore water.
good. Now I have everything inside, each compound inside the buffer. I will just add water in order to uh, adjust the concentration on everything. Uh, I will filter it with a syringe and with a filter just to be sure that everything is still clean. Good, now the buffer is prepared, the laser buffer is prepared. What we need to do now is, before starting, is to set the thermal block because then the samples will uh, I've already put some uh, leaf material here, it's approximately uh, 10 uh, milligram. Uh, it will be grinded in a tissue lyser, then the buffer, the lysis buffer will be added on it. And we are going to incubate the samples for uh, one night, so overnight at, at 37 degrees. Uh, well, we have set already the thermal block, everything is prepared so we can go to grind the, the leaf material and start with the, and proceed with the extraction. Here is the tissue lyser. We are going to grind the leaves uh, for one minute at 30 Hz. Everything has to be balanced. Good, I'm going to start. It looks fine. This as well, good. Good, now we are going to place uh, 1.2 milliliter of the freshly prepared PTBDTT buffer on the, on the samples. I'm going to vortex them shortly. Uh, then we are going to seal the tubes with the uh, paraffin and put them onto the, onto the thermal block. The thermal block is already settled, 37 degrees. And once uh, we are ready, we can actionate it so that it's rotating at 300 RPM and uh, well, we are going to leave it incubating overnight. Good, uh, we will continue today with the extraction. Uh, the sample were incubating overnight. Uh, they are still incubating in the thermal block at 37 degrees. I will show you briefly what we need uh, for today. So we need some ice uh, for later. We need also the buffer or the, the solutions that I have shown you yesterday. So the binding buffer, the guanidine hydrochloride buffer and sodium acetate. Uh, we need some plastic consumable, some uh, key again shredder uh, columns from a, a plant mini kit, extraction kit from key again. We need also the um, uh, minelut uh, silica columns also from key again. We will need also some uh, Zemo reservoir, 50 uh, milliliter reservoir to to uh, to build uh, the binding apparatus i will show you later how uh, it will be done and uh, and then falcon tubes so 14 microliter falcon tubes and uh, uh, 50 milliliter falcon tubes uh, everything of course uh, as i told you yesterday is to be first cleaned uh, we have already done it and also uh, washed with um, uh, sodium hydrochloride or with uh, DNA away, rinsed with water or irradiated with UV light. Good, we will need also uh, three uh, other buffers, so the P3 buffer from a Kiagen extraction kit, PE buffer also from Kiagen Minelut uh, kit, and finally for elution, uh, well, we are using an AE buffer also from a Kiagen plant mini kit, but actually you can also use the uh, buffer if you want. Uh, good, let's build then the binding apparatus. For that we need some um, Minelut uh, Kiagen uh, silica columns and Simo extension reservoirs. So basically we have to force a Minelut silica columns at the end of the uh, Simo extension reservoirs. We are really to force it very tight so that it won't be uh, lost during the centrifugation. At the end, we can also put some paraffin. The paraffin does not really help uh, fixing the structure, but well, it will at least avoid that the lead of the mini lute column will fly around. Good, finally, this structure has to be placed on a 50 milliliter Falcon tubes. Good, let's start with the extraction. First, we have to centrifuge the tube that we're incubating on a bench uh, centrifuge at full speed and for 10 minutes. After centrifuging, you can see there is something sedimented on the bottom of the tube. We have now to take the supernitant, more or less 1.2 milliliter, place in a new 2 milliliter tube, and then mix it with uh, 325 microliter of P3 buffer. 
We can mix by paper, piper thing. This solution we will get whitish and somehow also dense. And well now we can incubate them in ice for five minutes. Good, and now we have to centrifuge the samples for uh, again at full speed in the bench centrifuge for five minutes. So now the centrifugation is ready. We see there is like a sediment and a supernatant. We have then to uh, pass the supernatant through a shredder column of the key again kit. Uh, and this has to be done in, tw in two steps, uh, each with uh, 600 microliter. And now we have to centrifuge at full speed for two minutes. Good, now we have to take out uh, the sample from the shredder tube and place it in a 40 milliliter falcon tube and then filter or pass through the shredder uh, column the rest of the sample. So we can do it uh, carefully with the pipe, but be careful not to disturb the sediment. The sediment. And again, centrifuge it for two minutes at full speed. Let's continue with the rest of the sample. And now we have to add 400 microliter of sodium acetate to the samples first, mix them shortly and then add 10 milliliter of the binding buffer. And for that I'm going to use the um, serological pipette. We need to, to add 10 milliliters, so quite a big amount, and uh, a Peleus ball. Well, uh, we can mix everything by shaking a couple of times and then place everything to the binding apparatus we have just built a few minutes ago. Good, now we can seal uh, the falcon tube with some parafilm just because the, uh, with the Zimu reservoir is not going to, to close very well. And then we are going to centrifuge it in a, in a bit bigger centrifuge. We need a specific rotor for a, for a falcon tube, of course, for a 50 milliliter falcon tubes. And we are going to centrifuge them for um, six minutes at 400 G. Alternatively, we can also uh, centrifuge for four minutes. Then if we want, we can turn like the tubes like that of uh, 180 degrees and then continue for the remaining two minutes. Well, we are going to centrifuge it simply for six minutes at 400 G and uh, then see if uh, everything is uh, flow through the, the mini elute column. Good, we can see everything is flow uh, through the, the, but not everything. You can see there's something still in the mini elute column but that's uh, fine, so that uh, the, uh, the Zemo reservoir at least is empty. Well, here the same, here even the Minelut silica column is empty. So what we have to do next is to disassemble the, the, up, the binding apparatus and to place the Minelut column back to the, to the two milliliter collection tube. You have to be a bit careful doing that, especially in this case that there is some fluid still in the minelut silica.
good. And now we have to try spin the, the columns to in, in, a, in a bench centrifuge. 3300 G for one minute, just to be sure that everything is flowing out of the Minelut silica column. Good, now everything has uh, flowed uh, through the Minelut column, so we can get rid of this uh, liquid waste. We have to collect this separately, so because it needs to be disposed uh, in a sp yeah, uh, separately. Placing the mini root column back, being careful not to touch the, uh, the the collection tube. The same here is not much. And then we go ahead with the washing steps. For that we have to use the PE uh, buffer from the mini root kit. We need to add 700 microliter twice. And we centrifuge again at 3300 G for one minute. Could we repeat the washing step a second time? First we discard the, the liquid. We add again 700 microliter of the PE buffer. And centrifuge again at 3300 3, G for one minute. Again, we repeat the previous step. We discard the, the liquid and, and then we will centrifuge once at full speed. We will try spin it at full speed in the bench centrifuge. Being careful not to touch the bottom of the minilut column. So with the bottom of the minilut column, the tube, the collection tube. So we centrifuge at full speed for one minute. Now we can place the minilut column in a new either two milli two milliliter or one point five milliliter tube. And then we will elute the DNA bound on the membrane of the on the silica membrane using well I will use some uh, E buffer from um, Kia Gen Plant Mini Kit extraction kit but uh, if you want you can use also the uh, buffer. I'm going to add 50 microliter. Dilution will will be done twice. So two times 50 uh, microliter of uh, elution buffer and uh, I will incubate it for half an hour at room temperature. Good, 30 minutes are over. Now we have to put the samples back to the centrifuge and uh, centrifuging them for one minute at full speed.
we will repeat the uh, elution step again with 50 microliter of uh, IE buffer again incubating it for uh, half an hour at room temperature 